Lady Charmaine, and my guest today is an award-winning recording artist with a four-octave range. In the late 1990s, she was so proud to let everybody know that she had a man. And today she's here to talk about her latest project and new reality show, R&B Divas L.A. Help me welcome recording artist Miss Shantae Moore. How you doing, Shantae? I'm doing great. Thank you. How are you? Good, thank you. And congratulations on the success of the newest franchise of R&B Divas LA. You guys are just truly blowing up the ratings. Did you expect this type of success so quick? You know, I didn't know what to expect at all, but I, I must say I am pleasantly surprised at the responses that I am getting from Twitter and people walking down the street. And it's pretty strange, but it's good. <laughs> Yeah, because, I mean, right off the bat, you guys are doing so well. What made you decide to even do a reality show? Well, they came and, they came and asked about it, and what they offered was something to talk about music. That's mm -hmm. why I, I really even gave it my attention, because it's R&B Divas LA. It's really about R&B and our musical journeys and what we're going to do from this point on. And the journey in the show is, is purposeful. So I really, really like the way they presented the show and how it really turned out to be something really emotionally and uh, uh, musically successful and, and uh, what would I call it, um, it's intimate, but it's, oh God, it's like living out loud with people watching. It's very interesting. Right. Did you uh, know any of the cast members before you started shooting? And if so, who did you know? Well, I knew all of them except for Claudette Ortiz. She's the only one I had not met. But I didn't know the young lady like, oh, call me on the phone, let's go have a lunch kind of friend. They were more like, oh, my gosh, hey, we're doing a show together. Cool. <laughs> and then, you know, I would see them in the show and go, oh, girl, that was good. Like, Kelly, I've done a few shows with. Michelle A, I've done a couple shows with. Uh, Little Mo and I wrote a song together. Um, well, she wrote, actually, I think it. She wrote it. <laughs> um, called Straight Up uh, with, uh, with J.D., and so we've just had relationships outside of it. And, you know, with uh, Tom from Invoke, I've just been a fan of Invoke. So I've seen her around um, a lot. So, you know, it was, it was rather natural. I liked that I didn't have a, a negative experience with anybody. So that was great that I just look over and go, okay, this is going to be fun. So looking at the show, what can we expect to see on this show this season? We'll see us being ourselves. I think most importantly, that's the best part of it all to me, is that you can get to know each one of us better than just you, better than you can in like a 30-minute show, you know? You got to sing song. That's what you're there for. You sing, 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 thank you, and good night. Where this, you see when emotional things happen, how we react to it. When we're sitting in a situation, something's not very uh, easy to deal with, you see how we deal with difficult situations and that's something that you can't do unless you're on a tv show um you get to see what really is underneath the surface on most most of us but you can't see everything of course because it's in a very controlled uh time period as far as you know it's only for that time that you get to see it for nine weeks but you'll get you'll get to know it better and i think that's the part about music that makes music wonderful is that we share our hearts and our lives and you get to see rather than just hear because you did something that was very interesting. You um, revealed on the show this past Wednesday, you know, something very personal to you um, regarding your um, relationship with Kenny and also the um, regarding the child custody that you're going yeah. through. And that was very personal. What made you want to open that up to the audience for us to see that? I know it's a reality show, but, you know, sometimes on reality shows, some people keep certain things private, but you really opened that up to us. What made you decide to do that? Well, Kenny filed public papers. So when he made it public, I then talked about it. If he mm -hmm. had never filed it and made it public, I would have never mentioned it ever. But I'm not going to sit by and be a victim of anything. Right. So I thought it necessary to say my part, which is I'm surprised and appalled. And I can't believe he's even doing it in the first place. So, you know, I let him know before he, before he filed it as filed. Because when you file it, it's public record. Like, you on the street to go find out about what is in those papers. And once he made that public, yeah, I, I had to make sure I told my son what was going on. And it was happening in the middle of the show. And, you know, it was, it was a choice, and I made it. 
Um, but I didn't want my son to be hurt by it. So if it's public, I'll tell my part. Right. I'll make sure my son is covered, and and that's what I did. So how's the situation going right now? <laughs> <laughs> um, um, it's still in the process. It's still, um, okay. The custody part is over. Um, he he lost that part. That's not happening. <laughs> there are some other issues that are still pending, and he wants to, you know, make a, a fuss about it. So he can fuss all he wants to. It's his prerogative as well. But um, it's just I'm just surprised. I'm surprised and pretty floored uh, at it even happening. So mm. you know, I don't know. It is what it is, and I'll be all right. I'm more than a survivor. I'm a conqueror. So, I know that's right. You know. <laughs> And on the flip side, you showed a relationship with one of your ex-husbands, Kadeem Hardison, how people can really still become friends, keep a friendship, and still move in harmony, which was a great flip side to also show on the show. So what made you decide to show that? That was great, because sometimes, you know, exes aren't as close as you (laughs) and Kadeem are, and I thought that was good for you to show that. You know what? I had always intended to have Kim, uh, Kadeem on the show because he is my family. He really is a part of my life. Like, every day, we don't talk every day, but we're involved in our daughter's lives, and we have so much fun just watching her grow up. And, you know, we he come over and go swimming with us on 4th of July or just any day it was super hot. He's like, I'm coming down <laughs> out of the fountain. <laughs> And we just have a ball from her graduating at different different times at different levels in, in school and just celebrating his birthday with him and his girlfriend at the time. And just, I, I absolutely love him. And we want the best for one another. And I'm like, I want the world to see you, like how gorgeous you are. I think he's so handsome and so sweet. He's <laughs> such a good man. He um, He's a part of my life. So that was part of what I wanted to have on the show. And there'll be more. I think he'll come back. We do a second season. He'll be back. Now, now, with all that being said, girl, why don't y'all just go ahead and get back together? No, ma'am. <laughs> no, we're, we're, <laughs> we are really good friends, and we're going to stay right there. We're going to stay right there. You know, and I think you have to know who you are with somebody. And I think that's the best part. I get to keep the part that works. That always works. You know what I mean? And not that sex wasn't good because it was, but um, that's not where we want to go with our relationship. It really is about keeping close and making sure that we understand that we're family and that I got his back. If anybody mess with him, I'm like a lady on living color. Nobody better not talk about my community. <laughs> no loss. <laughs> so that's how I feel about him, and he feels the same about me and my daughter. And I, we, he's just a good man. He just is. So, um, but no, we don't want to get back together. I don't think that's what we want for each other. Well, that was well, that was good to know. Thank you so much for sharing that side of him. And also on this show, you guys came up with this great idea when you guys were sitting at your birthday. I think it was your birthday dinner, and you guys are talking about nacho mama logs. How is that going? Because are we going to be able to see that fully on the show? Are you going to turn that uh-huh. into a show that's going to go on tour that we can all actually check it out? Uh. The answer to the first question is, yes, it is a part of the show. It is the point of the show. So please just keep watching. I can't tell you any more than that about that part. You've got to let it unfold. I can't give you all of that. But you will see what we're working on come to fruition. Absolutely. Okay. And and showing the previews, because, you know, after the show ends, according to the previews, look like there's going to be a little drama unfolding. Can you give us a little inside scoop on the little drama that we may see coming up? Well, as you can tell, somebody said something about some Timberlands and some um, Vaseline. And I answer, this part is coming by me. It's making a lot of noise. Um, uh, some Timberlands and Vaseline was mentioned, and uh, which is why I responded to that. And uh, it wasn't cute. It wasn't cute at all. But you know what? Um, I have nothing to be ashamed of. I have nothing to regret. I did nothing that I have to apologize to anyone for. So um not sure if I should say more than that. Let me think. <laughs> Go ahead. <laughs> hmm. I give you permission. Uh, she gives me permission. Well, let's just say I think that we all have our strengths and we all are responsible for our own actions. And um, my kindness should not be taken for weakness. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And my, my little bittiness should not be taken for my lack of strength. Amen. Uh, and I grew up in the ghetto. 
light-skinned girl in the ghetto, long hair. Please trust and know I'm not afraid of nobody. Okay. So I've had to fight a lot in the ghetto. It was a lot to fight for. Mm -hmm. um, like people, it's crazy to me, though, how people think you chose to be a particular color. You come out the color you are. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you, don't, mm -hmm. you don't get to go, mm, can I have a shade lighter, please, or a shade darker? I'd like to <laughs> shade that down. Uh, that's not the way it works. Uh, you are who you are. So I've had to deal with, you know, dealing with the way others view me and what I think of myself. I'm, I'm okay with me. I know exactly who I am. I'm not everything I want to be. Nor am I perfect, nor do I even attempt to say that I am. But I do my best. I stand by my, my own um, sense of self. I am a woman of integrity at all times. And if I'm not, I'll fess up to that and say, you know what? I messed up. And it wasn't right. But I try to keep myself only looking at, okay, how can you do your best? How can you improve on what that you think is the best? Um, so I don't know. And I can't, you, if you don't do that for yourself, then that's on you. So I don't even know if I explained it, but that's what I feel about that without saying anything about that. I got you. I was following you. <laughs> and okay. speaking and speaking of that, because are you a minister, Shantae? Of the My gospel? A minister. Me a minister? I think we all are walking epistles of Christ. I believe we all are. Our lives testify of who we say God is in us. Um, so yes, in that sense, yes. And um, I thought someone I told me that you were an ordained minister, so that's why I was asking. No. Okay. Amen. But I do want to talk about the song that you introduced to the world last week. It was so beautiful and so powerful. And I can tell that that song, like you said, every time you sing that song, it does something to you. And for those that missed the show, it was so powerful. Mm. She lifted up the name of Jesus because he said, whenever I be lifted up, I'll draw all men unto what? me. Share <laughs> with us the song and the meaning of that song to you and the inspiration behind that song and why it's so powerful when you sing it why it moves you so much well well you know i think first of all my sister actually wrote this song which is crazy because it's so near and dear to my heart i'm like i wish i wrote that <laughs> uh, but what's beautiful about that song to me that that really speaks of my heart's desire is that i have looked and searched and put other men other people before my father um and and it always missed this is the mark because there's a place in each of us that can only be filled by the Father, by Jesus, and that's it. So we sometimes, and women especially, we like planning and plotting mm -hmm. who we're going to talk to, who we're going to be with, who comes next, if I, if he's good enough, if I'm good enough, if all of these things, they work and work and work, and we try so hard to to make something happen. And honestly, it really is about putting your priorities straight. You have to put them first. You have to seek ye first the kingdom of God and all these righteousness, and then. All of these things are going to be added onto it. And this song really speaks of my heart of how I thought love was going to fill the entire whole of man to woman love. But honestly, it can't. It really can't. And, and I've gone through enough, especially with my last uh, relationship with Kenny. I realized even more so that no matter how good a guy you might be, or how good, in your inten how good your intentions may be, I still have to deal with the fact that you're not enough mm. in yourself, in who you are as a man. You're not enough to fulfill my joy, to fulfill my peace, to even make me happy. It is about Jesus that really makes me happy. And it's a lesson, it's a hard lesson to learn, but I've learned it. And every time I sing it, I tell him from my soul, more than anyone, more than anything on this earth, I want you. I want you to be number one. So that's really what the heart's desire is, and yeah, it means a lot to sing it to the world. It really does. And what's the name of the song, and is the song available for download? It's called Jesus, I Want You, mm -hmm. and it will be available in less than 10 days. It comes out on the 30th. You can um, pre-order right now from iTunes and, and on our Amazon, More Is More is the album, M-O-O-R-E is More. And... Um, yeah, it's downloadable right this minute, and then you can have the album in your hand or on your iPod on the 30th of this month. <laughs> Don't awesome. Lie. Now, Shantae, yeah. what are you expecting this show to do for your career? I know a lot of times people use, not use reality shows, but because they're there, they use it as a major platform. 
for something mm-hmm. for something bigger. What are you expecting this show to do for your career? Because I know you're launching a new project. Is there anything mm-hmm. else you're expecting as well? Um, from this show? Yes. Well, um, no, just exposure and for my audience to be able to get to know me a little better because that's what it's about. I share my heart and my music. So if they get to know my personality a little better or know my intentions or the way I'm really, really a retarded woman, <laughs> um, then if they get to see that, I think they get to know who I really am from day to day. You can know from music that I'm a lover of love and I'm emotional and that I'm strong or that I look to the Lord for my help. But day-to-day basis, you would know that I eat as much as I do. Good Lord, every time I turn around on the show, I'm eating. I know you love seafood. um, I learned that about you. Oh, man. I love food. I really do love good food. And um, and I think embracing that is good. So, Mm -hmm. uh, But I really, it's about the platform. It's about being exposed at the right time for the right reasons. I don't just want people in my life and in my business for nothing. It really is about the record. It's about my career moving forward. It's about empowering my life and supporting my children and my family and friends in my life. We work hard to sustain, and we'd like to fly a little higher. <laughs> Amen. Now, I know you were an, you were an actress. Do you um, have any more plans to continue acting? I know you did stage plays. Is, do you have anything else in the works along those lines? Not yet, but from your lips to God's ears. Let's go. Let's do it. <laughs> okay. Now, I want to talk about something. I want to take you back a little bit because, girl, that video and song, Contagious. That oh. <laughs> song and the video. Even I went back and played it today. I'm not even going to lie. Every time I watch it, it just makes me laugh because whoever put it together, that song, whoever created the song was so descriptive that they did the video to do it justice. Who wrote the song? Was that was that an R. R. Kelly written song? Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. R. Kelly all by himself. I mean, you guys could have kept that going. I mean, you you, you all could have really kept that whole storyline just going. And I just want to let you know, I had to throw that way back in there, way, way back and go in there. <laughs> but if people want to follow you, are you on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn? Where can they find you? Not LinkedIn, everything else. On Twitter and Instagram, look it under I, uh, I am Shantae Moore, and it's C-H-A-N-T-E. M O O R E. I am Shantae Moore on Twitter and Instagram. And on Facebook, it's Shantae Moore. There's a regular and the fan page, which are a link. Um, there's just too many people on the regular, and then they make you turn into fans. I don't understand mm-hmm. that part because you should have as many friends as you want without turning into being a fan. I don't mm-hmm. even get that. But, <laughs> but nonetheless, um, yes, I'm on those. I am Shantae Moore on Twitter and Facebook. And on Twitter, I do more often, honestly. Um, it's just easier to do from my phone. I don't know. I don't know why it is, but it is. It's just click, 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 and it's just post. So um, I have a good time tweeting with my friends and fans. And <laughs> Okay, we would, we want to remind everyone to make sure that you tune in to watch R&B Divas every Wednesday at 10, 9 what? Central, only on TV One. Can't wait to see this Nacho Mama Logs <laughs> as uh-huh. they begin to uh, unfold all of this. And we just want to make sure that we pray for a second season of R&B Divas LA. And we definitely wish you the best, Shantae. Thank you so much for coming on the show. It's my pleasure. Thank you so much for having me. You're welcome. I look forward to having you back, too. Okay.